Intuitively, the range of a species is the set of locations where it can be found. Ranges are generally estimated from a collection of locations where the species is known to be present and absent. We care about species ranges because they are important for biodiversity monitoring and conservation. Unfortunately, we have ranges for relatively few species. However, community science projects are collecting huge amounts of species observation data, which may allow us to monitor many more species. Many algorithms have been proposed for modeling species ranges. However, most existing approaches are unable to take advantage of large training sets or jointly model many species. To provide a sense of scale, the training data for this paper consists of 35 million observations, covering around 50,000 species. Our goal is to develop a model that can estimate the probability that a species is present at a given location. However, we impose two important constraints. First, we want to train our model using presence-only data, which consists of locations where the species are known to be present, with no information about where species are absent. Second, we want the model to be efficient and scalable so it can take advantage of tens of millions of training points across tens of thousands of species. Our pipeline starts with presence-only species observation data. Given a location, we pass the coordinates through a neural network that produces a feature vector representing the location. That feature vector is fed into a classifier that predicts species presence and absence. By sweeping over longitude and latitude, we can use this network to generate species range maps. This is a spatial implicit neural representation for the species ranges. Our approach is trained end to end. We investigate several different loss functions for training with presence-only data. Please see the paper for complete details. Our work also introduces a new Fort Ask benchmark for species mapping and spatial learning. Two of the tasks, S and T and IUCN, are species mapping tasks where expert range maps are used as ground truth. Collectively, they cover around 3,000 species. In the GeoPrior task, we use the range predictions to assist an image classifier on a fine-grained 40,000-way classification task. The geo-feature task is a transfer learning task where we use the learned geospatial representation to predict nine dense features, like elevation, across the continental U.S. Now we will highlight a few results from the paper. This is a visualization of our model's performance for one bird species from the S and T task. This model is trained with only 10 examples per species. While the model's predictions are surprisingly good in the low data regime, they improve as we add more training data. Our method outperforms a popular logistic regression baseline, even when the baseline gets to use environmental variables as input instead of raw coordinates. Our method also benefits from environmental variables, but the benefit is small. This suggests that the network has learned a rich representation of the environment during the training process, making the environmental variables redundant. We can also study the effect of joint learning across species. Here we show S and T results for a model trained on the 500 species in the S and T task only. The colors indicate different amounts of training data per species. As we add more species to the training set, performance on the S and T species increases. Put another way, we are adding insects, mammals, plants, and other unrelated species, and we obtain beta models for the birds in the S and T task. In addition, the different colored lines show that adding more training data per species produces significant improvements. To understand why, we can visualize the geospatial representation learned by our model. With 10 examples per species, the representation is smooth. With 1,000 examples per species, there is significantly more spatial detail. Many challenges remain. The data from community science platforms has significant spatial biases and exhibits a long-tailed class distribution. We do not explicitly account for either in our work. Thank you for watching. Code and data are available on our GitHub page.